Good day to D. Our topic today is we're continuing on with consistence of equations and our goal I can solve amount value word problems and those that involve speed, distance, and time. Now I'm just going to explain the amount value problems that we're going to look at and I'm going to do two of them. I'm not going to do them in that grass chart like I did yesterday or at last note, uh, but I am uh, going to think of the grass process when I do this. Um, and so for an amount value problem, uh, this occurs when I have a certain number of items and each item has a value attached to it. So I have in the question, there's going to be number of items. I've got so many things and each item has a specific value attached to it. And I'm going to set it up in a chart. And when I set stuff up in a chart, I don't necessarily need let statements because uh, the chart gives us the let statements. Um, so use this example as a guide if you have a question that gives an amount of objects that have a value attached to them. So in this case, we're going to do the most simple objects that have a value attached to them, and that is coins. Ben has $12.30 in quarters and dimes. If he has 75 coins total, how many of them are quarters? So the first thing we need to do is highlight the given information. We're told that he has $12.30 in quarters and in dimes, and he has 75 coins total. And so here's where we have our amount and value. Uh, the things that we're given are quarters and dimes. And each of those quarters and dimes have a value attached to them. Quarters, of course, are worth 25 cents each. And dimes are worth 10 cents each. So they do have a value attached to each of them. And it says how many of them are quarters. So here's how I'm going to set this up. I'm going to take a look at a chart. We've highlighted our given information. And we have to think about what we're required to find. Uh, we are required to find, I'm going to do that in green, how many. That's the big thing we're required to find. How many of them are, and in this case, it's only quarters. We're not asking how many are quarters and how many are dimes. We only want to know how many of them are quarters. So I'm going to set up this problem. And the neat thing about amount value problems is that you always have an amount and a value. And across the top are usually the two things that have an amount and a value, in this case, quarters and dimes. And then quite often there will be a total. So usually we have the two things across the top that we are that we are, are, are unknowns and we are going to declare the amount of quarters and the amount of dimes to be the things to be our variables. So we got quarters and we got dimes. Now let's have a look at the total. We're told that Ben has uh, $12.30 in quarters. Now that's a total. And you have to think about it for a second. Is that a total amount or is it a total value? And of course, that dollar sign tells us that it's a value. So in the total value, we're going to put $12.30. The other thing we have here that I had boxed up is 75. That 75 is the number of coins he has. So that is a total amount. So it goes in here. So we're going to put 75 in that box. Now the only thing left to figure out is what is the total value of the quarters and what is the total value of the dimes. Well since quarters are worth 25 cents each, um, I have to multiply how many of them I have by 25 cents. So we go 0.25 times Q. And dimes are worth 10 cents each, so I have to do 0.1 times D. And now I have to set up my two equations. And you can just pick them straight out of the chart. Uh, for my amount, if I add up the quarters and the dimes, I get my total amount. 
So I add up the quarters and the dimes, and I get 75. So that's my first equation. And if I add up the value, I don't have any other coins in here. The total value comes from quarters and dimes. So I have 0.25 quarters plus 0.1 dimes, and that's going to equal that $12.30. That is my equation, too. And since we uh, already know how to solve equations, I'm going to, through the magic of, uh, of um, video, just solve this for you. Ta-da! Okay, so there's our solution. Uh, you'll notice that the first thing I did was get rid of the decimals by multiplying by 100, which basically just put everything into cents. The next thing I did was multiply this uh, equation number 1 by 10. And the reason I multiplied equation number 1 by 10 is because I wanted to get rid of the dimes. The question asked us how many were quarters. So since it asked us how many were quarters, I chose 10 to multiply for and get rid of the dimes because it never asked for dimes. So I don't need to even bother solving for the dimes. And then, of course, I subtracted the two equations and got my answer of 32. So there were 32 quarters. Okay, now here's another example of an amount value problem. Uh, and it's a little bit different, but it's still, there's still an amount and a value. It's just we're not given the total value in this case. So let's read through it and highlight the information. It says, Jessica has a bulk food store that sells peanuts at $5 per kilogram and pecans at $20 per kilogram. She wants to make 30 kilograms of a mixture that sells for $10 per kilogram. How many kilograms of peanuts and how many kilograms of pecans should she use to make this mixture? Okay, so the information we have, I've got five kilogram, $5 per kilogram of pecans and peanuts. Uh, okay, peanuts are $5 per kilogram and pecans are $20 per kilogram. And she wants to make 30 kilograms, that's important. And she wants to sell those 30 kilograms for $10 per kilogram. Now I'm going to make a chart here again because this is an amount value problem. She has so many kilograms and each kilogram is worth some money. So it's an amount value problem. So I'm going to put amount and value. And we're going to figure this out. Let's do our chart. I've got two things I'm mixing together. So this is kind of a combination of an amount value problem and a mixture problem like we were doing yesterday. So I've got peanuts and pecans, pecans. Uh, and I have some totals here because I do know how much she wants to make. Uh, so the amount of peanuts and pecans, I don't know what they are. So I'm going to call x the peanuts and y the pecans. But I do know how much I want total. In total, I want 30 kilograms. After I've mixed those two things together, I want a total of 30 kilograms. Now, the problem is I don't have a total price, but I do know that this last mixture, this total, sells for $10 per kilogram. So if that mixture sells for $10 per kilogram and there's 30 kilograms of it, then I need to do $10 times $30 per, or times 30 kilograms. So I've got $300 worth of the mixture. Now, of course, our peanuts sold for $5 per kilogram. So that means that I have to multiply the 5 by the x to get the value of peanuts because I have x kilograms of peanuts and each of those kilograms is worth $5 so the whole lot of them are worth 5x. And the pecans, they're much more expensive. They were $20 for one kilogram. So if I have y kilograms of them, I have to multiply 20 by the y to get the value of the pecans. And so now I need to set up my two equations and solve. And again, we can pick the two equations right out of there because the one equation only get that 30 kilogram total from peanuts and pecans. There's nothing else in there. So if I add the pecans and the peanuts, I end up with 30 kilograms total. 
And of course, the total value comes from the $5 for the peanuts plus the $20 for the pecans has to equal the $300 that the mixture is worth. And there's my equation one and my equation two. And again, through the magic of video, I'm just going to pause this while I solve it. You can do the same thing if you want. Ta-da! And there we have it. Um, so you can see that I multiplied my equation 1 by 5. I decided I was getting rid of the x's, and I subtracted uh, to get rid of the x's. So when I do equation 2, subtract equation 3, I'm left with 15y because 20y minus 5y is 15y. And of course, 300 minus 150 is uh, 150. And then we divide both sides by 15 in order to get y equals 10. And if y equals 10, we're going to sub it into this equation up here, and we get x plus 10 equals 30, so x must equal 20. So, therefore, she needs 10 kilograms of pecans and 20 kilograms of peanuts. Okay, next question, we're going to move to speed distance time problems. And for all of these questions, you need to remember that to find the distance, I multiply the speed and the time. So from this, you can get two other relationships by rearranging. If we know that distance equals speed times time, I can rearrange and divide both sides by S and get distance over speed actually equals time. Or if I go back to this original and divide both sides by T, I get distance over time equals speed. And that's the one that I usually remember, that distance over time equals speed. Um, because we all know that speed is in kilometers per hour. So kilometers is distance and hour is time. So we have kilometers per hour. So that's the one that I usually remember. Now we're going to do two different types of problems. This first one is on relative speeds. And we're going to do that in a chart too. We're going to declare our variables in a chart. A riverboat took two hours to travel 24 kilometers down a river with the current and three hours to travel back against the current. What is the speed of the boat in still water? So what are what information are we given? We're going to highlight our given information. We got 24 kilometers um, and we got three hours. And that's pretty much all. So that's our given information. What are we required to find? Well, we're required to find the speed of the boat if we can take away the effect of the current. So what two things are going on here? The two things that are going on here is a trip there and back again. So with the current and against the current. So that's going to be my part, part of my chart with current and against current. And then across the top, we're always going to put speed, distance, and time. And now with the current, we have the boat. And we're going to let the boat speed be B. And I'm going to need a let statement for that as well. But we're going to put that in there. If we let the boat speed be B, and the current speed be C, if it's with the current, that means that the current is pushing it. It's making it go faster. So I have to add in the speed of the current to get how fast things are going. If it's against the current, that means that the current's pushing against me. It's slowing me down. So I have to subtract the C on uh, the speed of the boat. Now, the distance, of course, is 24 kilometers, no matter where you go. And the time, well, what did it say? We didn't highlight that information. Two hours with the current uh, and three hours back again. So with the current was two hours. Makes sense. It's going faster than coming back when the current's working against it. So speed equals distance times time. So in this case, speed... Uh, or sorry, speed equals distance over time, or distance equals speed times time. You can set it up with any one of those equations. 
Um, I think actually speed equals distance divided by time is going to work because distance, if I take distance and divide by time, I get just a very simple equation. So I'm going to use speed equals distance over time to set up my two equations. And so my equation one is going to come from this first row of the chart. And my equation one is going to be the speed, which is b plus c, equals distance divided by time. Well, 24 divided by 2 is 12. And there's my equation one. Now my equation two is going to come from the second line that says b minus c equals 24 divided by 3. Well. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So that's my equation too. Now this is a pretty simple equation to solve, so I'm not going to use the movie magic. I'm just going to take equation 1 and add equation 2. Now I'm adding instead of subtracting because that's going to get rid of the speed of the current. And it's the speed of the current that I don't need. The question asked me, if we take a look up and see what the question asked, it says, what is the speed of the boat in still water? So I don't need the speed of the current. They're asking me for the speed of the boat. So when I add the two, the current's going to go away, and I get 2B equals 20, B equals 10. So therefore, the boat's speed is 10 kilometers per hour. And lastly, and this is running long again because it's word problems, lastly I have a different type of speed distance time problem um, where we have total times or total distances. So it says Adam traveled 395 kilometers from Ski Valley to Vancouver in six hours. So here we've got some important information there. We got some numbers going on. The first part of the trip was by train and we had an average speed of 70 kilometers an hour and the second part of the trip was by bus at an average of 60 kilometers an hour. How long was he on the train? So I've highlighted our given information. Can't draw a diagram. Now I figure out what we're required to find. How long was he on the train? What are they asking for? Are they asking for distance or are they asking for time? Well I would think that they're asking for time here. They want to know the time he was on the train. Uh, if they wanted to know distance, they might say, how far did he travel by train? So I'm thinking this is time. So we're going to set this up in a chart once again. And across the top, we're going to have speed, distance, and time. But we have one other piece of information than we had before. I've got two parts of the trip, like I had before when I had with the current and against the current. But this time we just have part one by, and part two, or train and bus. But it also gives us some information on total. So if I have some information on total, I need to include a, a section in the chart for total. So let's let the, what do we need to know? We need to know how long was he on the train. So that's looking for time. So I should put my variables in time. So I'm going to let T be for the train and B be for the bus since we're looking for time. A speed, I know they gave that to me. They said the train averaged 70 kilometers of an hour and the bus averaged 60. And the distance, of course, says we have a total distance of 395. That's all they gave us. And then let's look at our other things. Total speed, that doesn't make any sense. You don't add speeds together any time. Um, total time, did they give us that? Let's look up. It says Adam traveled 395 kilometers from Ski Valley to Vancouver in six hours. There's that piece of information, six hours. And so distance, I don't know. But I do know that little formula, I do know that distance equals speed times time. 
So if distance equals speed times time, then I've got a speed of 70 and a time of t, so I'm going to put in 70t. And I've got a speed of 60 and a time of b, so I'm going to put in 60b. And of course, the two parts together equal the total. So now I can get my equations this time going down the chart than across when we were doing um, the amount value problems. This tells me that t plus b equals 6 from this part of the chart. And from this part of the chart, I get my second equation, which is 70t plus 60b equals 395. So that's my equation 1 and my equation 2. And remember, we take a look up and it says, how long was he on the train? Well, that means we want t. So if he was on the train for t amount of time, um, that's what I'm solving for. I want to get rid of the b's if I can. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 60. So I can line up my b's. 60t plus 60b equals 360. There's my third equation. And now I'm going to solve. So after we worked through that, when I subtracted these two equations, I found that t was 3.5, which means that he was on the train for three and a half hours. Now, I didn't go on to solve for the second variable because it didn't ask me to. It says, how long was he on the train? I'm not going to do any more than they asked me. They said, how long was he on the train? So he was on the train for three and a half hours. Now, sometimes you might be asked for distance. It is actually always easier to put your variables in time, even if they ask you for distance. Because you can put the variables in time, and once you've solved for time, you know that distance equals speed times time, so you can just plug it into that equation. Um, so just be careful of that. It's usually easier when you have total distances and things like that to put your variables in time, even if they're asking for distance. And this video's run a little long, but that's it for today.